Albert State Park is an abandoned farm quarry. It was used throughout the mid-1840s until it was closed down in 1929. The park got its name by sailing ships hauling about the point of land. The Cape Ann granite industry became successful for a number of reasons. The fine quality of granite quickly attracted the attention of builders all along the eastern seaboard. Throughout most of its history, the granite industry on Cape Ann was dependent on immigrants, men from Britain, Finland, Sweden, and Italy, who as skilled stone cutters were attracted here by jobs. Many of the houses, neighborhoods, businesses, and most social institutions their families created are still around today. There were quite a few strikes that took place between 1895 and 1920. The Granite Company was founded in 1864 and grew to become the area's largest employer, with over 800 men on its payroll during the years of the 20th century. There were over a dozen quarries that were op operated on Cape Ann, including the Babson Fa Farm Quarry at Halibut State Park. <laughs> The small hammer usually weighed about 6 pounds and was a stone cutter's most important tool. They were used with plug drills for drilling holes and blocks as well as with tracers for incising lines along which the cutter wanted to block to split. Spoons were used to remove dust from the bottom of a hole made with a plug drill. If allowed to accumulate, the dust would form a cushion between the drill tip and the bottom of the hole, making the cutting a lot less efficient. A tracer was used for scoring blocks of granite. Wedges and half rounds were used to split blocks squarely into to a required size. The dog hole drill was used to cut shallow holes in either end of a stone prior to hoisting it out of a quarry. The small drill holes to split stone in the quarry rocks were small in diameter and not as deep as blasting holes. Each hole took 10 minutes to make, and, and a hole 3 inches deep was sufficient enough to split a block several feet thick. The small drill holes in rock that weren't meant to split rock could be round or rectangular and were a newer technology. Dog holes are larger in diameter but shorter in depth were used for holding the tips of dogs. Hooks that attached to the loops of chain that were used for hoisting blocks out of the quarry. The dead men, or staples, were used to anchor the guy wires that ran on the tops of derricks. With masks as tall as 100 feet, derricks were usually connected to the ground at six places. Turnstones were used for tying up vessels and were made on a lathe. Lathe work done on Cape Ann was generally small. Blasting holes were generally smooth and large in diameter. Parallel holes were made with a steam drill sometimes after the 1880s. These holes were filled in black powder that detonated to split off a large piece of granite, leaving behind half holes. The park also has a steel reinforced concrete fire control tower, which was built during World War II. On the upper levels, there were optical instruments used to provide aiming information for the mammoth guns that defended the harbors of Boston and Portsmouth. The tower is one of few along the east coast that has been renewed and open to the public. You will find many people and photographers throughout photographing water, rocks, greenery, birds, etc. This is also a place where you will find artists. Talbot Point is a uniquely beautiful seascape. You will find many families throughout its property. Kids love the rocks and tide pools. Adults love the trails and dogs are allowed as long as they are leashed. But remember, there's absolutely no swimming allowed.